The Chinese Grand Prix was officially held last weekend at the Shanghai International Circuit after a five-year absence, producing some thrilling racing moments. The event followed the sprint race format, and it was a great challenge for teams as well as the FIA to adapt to the track, which was not largely used for racing for over five years. By overcoming all these challenges, Red Bull drivers were able to earn more credit at the end of the weekend, continuing their dominance in China as well. Welcome back to Total F1. This is our full race report of the Chinese Grand Prix weekend. But before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. On Friday morning, teams started checking the conditions of the Shanghai International Circuit, as these were largely unknown. However, the session was red flagged when a grass section close to Turn 7 caught on fire mysteriously. Marshalls took five minutes to neutralize the situation, and it was a great loss for all the teams, as this was the one and only practice session of the day. A number of drivers went off the road while slowly adapting to the track conditions in Shanghai, but drivers were lucky to save their cars from any major incident, and at the end of the session, Stroll topped the timesheet, and behind him, Piastri, Verstappen, Perez and Hülkenberg were able to set some fast laps. During the SQ1 of the sprint shootout, George Russell faced the risk of being eliminated, but within the final few minutes, he was able to push himself out of the bottom five with a better lap time. Once again, a fire was observed close to Turn 5, similar to what was observed previously during the free practice session. This created a little delay in the sprint shootout. At the end of SQ1, two Alpine and Williams cars were eliminated, alongside with the VCA RB racing driver Yuki Tsunoda. At the start of the second part of sprint qualifying, a threat of rain was observed, and the first push lap turned into a very important one for that reason. Two McLaren drivers were able to set some fast laps, creating an advantage over their rivals. However, drivers like Verstappen, Leclerc and Perez set some faster laps than these two McLaren drivers. Most notably, Chinese driver Zhou Guan Yu was the 10th fastest of the session, being able to cross the hurdle of SQ2. George Russell, who was able to escape from the elimination zone of SQ1, was not lucky this time, as Rain arrived at the circuit when he tried to improve his lap time with the second run. That means Russell was eliminated alongside with Magnussen, Hülkenberg, Ricardo and Stroll. The final part of the qualifying for the sprint became interesting with wet track conditions. Drivers and teams were totally unaware of the prevailing track conditions, and the majority of drivers were sent with intermediate tyre sets, which appeared to be a failed effort, as drivers failed to find the grip. Leclerc was the first to go off the road with slippery track conditions. However, he was lucky to bring his car back to the track without any major issues. Verstappen tried to find the grip by following a different race line relative to the other drivers. However, he also failed to keep his car within track limits, going off the road at turn 6. Piastri became the first to set a competitive lap time by topping the timesheets. However, he was beaten by Perez. Most notably, Verstappen's lap time was deleted for exceeding track limits. Then, a number of drivers were able to set some fast lap times after finding the grip. Once again, Verstappen went off the road at the final corner of his second attempt, pushing him to the bottom of the timesheet. So Perez was hopeful about the pole position until Alonso used all of his experience to set the fastest lap of the entire session under such low grip conditions. But that was not the end of the dramas, as more and more changes happened within the final few minutes of the sprint qualifying. The lap time of Norris was also deleted after exceeding the track limits. Hamilton, who was without any lap time, recorded a lap time which was good enough to be the pole sitter. After two failed attempts to keep his challenger within the track limits, Verstappen did a lap which was good enough for P3. Then, Norris made a good comeback, stealing the pole from Hamilton. The drama continued, as his lap time was initially deleted by race control for exceeding the track limits. When Hamilton was ready to celebrate his pole position achievement, Norris's lap time was reinstated, setting him as a pole sitter for the sprint. Behind, Norris, Hamilton, Alonso, Verstappen, Sainz, Perez, Leclerc, Piastri, Bottas and Zhou occupied the top 10 positions, creating a somewhat unusual starting grid. Both Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton got a good start to the race by showing better reaction times. Then they started a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle till Lando Norris went off the road after losing control of his car. 
Even though Norris was able to rejoin the race after going wider at turn number one, he dropped down the order, totally losing the pole position advantage. That opened the opportunity for Fernando Alonso to take the second spot. Verstappen was comfortably in third spot, and three multiple champions were observed in the top three spots of the pack. Meanwhile, George Russell was driving fast after experiencing a bad sprint shootout, and he was able to enter the top at the start of lap 4 after making an easy move against Kevin Magnussen. After waiting for around 7 laps, Verstappen finally made his move against Fernando Alonso with the support of DRS. Alonso didn't try to defend against him with much effort, as the Spaniard clearly knew that his car was not strong enough to do so. Two laps later, the championship leader launched his attack against his old rival, Lewis Hamilton. Even though Hamilton tried to defend against the Red Bull driver, his Mercedes clearly lacks the pace compared to RB20. On lap 16, Fernando Alonso experienced multiple overtakes, dropping down to 6th place. Carlos Sainz was the first driver to attack his childhood hero by going wheel to wheel on several occasions. At one moment, they had some contact with their wheels as well. When both were busy in overtaking and defending their track positions, both lost focus on Perez. With that opportunity, Perez launched his attack, improving his track position up to 3rd. Within the next few seconds, not only Sainz, but also his teammate Charles Leclerc made successful overtakes against this experienced driver, pushing him down the order. Due to the contact that Alonso made with Sainz, the Aston Martin driver experienced a puncture, forcing him to enter the pit lane, further dropping down the order. When it was lap 17, a big battle was observed between the two Ferrari teammates for the fourth spot. They went wheel to wheel several times, before completing a successful overtake by Leclerc. During this scenario, Sainz was involved in one more wheel bang with his teammate too. After that, the race continued without any major incident, and Verstappen easily recorded the victory in the first sprint of the year. Behind him, Hamilton and Perez occupied the remaining podium spots. Then the Ferrari duo Leclerc and Sainz were in 4th and 5th positions respectively. Behind the Ferrari driver, two McLaren drivers Norris and Piastri occupied the spots in the final standings. After a bad qualifying session, Russell made a good recovery drive during the sprint race, improving his track position up to 8th and scoring points. Kick Sauber driver Zhou Guan Yu missed the opportunity of scoring points in his home race by a slim margin as he completed the race as 9th on the grid. Not like in the sprint shootout, track conditions were really good during the qualifying, and drivers were able to go at full throttle, unleashing the full powers of their cars. Most notably, Lewis Hamilton failed to cross the hurdle at the end of Q1, despite his stellar performances in the sprint race. Hamilton was in the 15th position, before being pushed further down the order by Gasly O'Connor Leclerc into the 18th spot. That was a really poor qualifying performance from the seven-time world champion. Zhou Guan Yu also missed the opportunity to perform in Q2 in front of his home crowd by a slim margin. Continuing his poor run, Logan Sargent once again experienced a big spin during the first part of qualifying. That means Zhou, Magnussen, Hamilton, Sonoda and Sargent were eliminated at the end of Q1. During Q2, Carlos Sainz experienced a big spin and crashed into the barriers after putting his two wheels in gravel. That brought the red flag to the session, but he was lucky to save his car without any major damage and Ferrari engineers quickly repaired his car, allowing him to take part in qualifying when the session was resumed. He recorded the fourth fastest lap time of the session after doing a great recovery drive. No other major incidents were recorded in Q2. In the end, Stroll, Ricardo, Ocon, Albon and Gasly were eliminated. Verstappen topped the timesheets in his first attempt and further improved it by three tenths of a second in the final attempt. That means Verstappen was able to start the race in pole, making it five times in raw since the start of the season, equaling the record of the 1999 season. Perez improved his lap time in his final attempt and created one more starting grid with a Red Bull 1-2. Alonso was in third spot, and behind him, two McLaren drivers, Norris and Piastri, reserved their spots in the starting grid. Two Ferrari drivers experienced a slight decline in their qualifying relative to their recent one. Leclerc was in sixth, and Sainz was in seventh spot of the starting grid. Russell, Hulkenberg and Bottas reserved the remaining track positions in the top 10 of the starting grid. 
As usual, Verstappen got a jump start with a good reaction time, easily converting his pole position advantage to a race lead. Alonso also used his two decades long experience in the sport to improve his position up to second by making a clever move against Perez by taking the outside path at turn number one. Meanwhile, in the middle of the pack, Nico Hülkenberg was able to overtake both the Ferrari drivers into the seventh spot. Not only him, but also Russell was able to improve his track position from 8th to 6th by overtaking two Ferraris. However, Hülkenberg lost his position in the immediate lap to two Ferraris as his car was not powerful like the cars from Maranello. After staying five laps behind the Aston Martin, Sergio Perez launched his attack to retake the grid position and it was successful. On lap 7, Alonso lost one more grid position to Lando Norris as well. Two laps later, Charles Leclerc made a clever move against George Russell, improving his track position up to 6th. Then he hunted down Oscar Piastri on lap 11, taking one closer spot to a podium finish. The Red Bull drivers decided to pit on lap 14, and the pit crew did a great job by completing that double stack without any errors. A virtual safety car was introduced on lap 21, when Valtteri Bottas parked his car by the side of the track with smoke coming out of the car. Two laps later, a full safety car session was introduced, as track officials failed to push Valtteri's car from the place that he parked. Norris was pitted under the virtual safety car, and Red Bull went again for a double stack under full safety car conditions. But this time, Perez lost the track position to Norris and Leclerc. At the race restart, Verstappen got a great start improving his race lead. Continuing the bad luck of VCA RB in China, Sonoda spun after making contact with the Haas driver Kevin Magnussen. This incident resulted in bringing an end to the race of Yuki Sonoda. On lap 27, Fernando Alonso made a clever move against Carlos Sainz after losing a number of track positions to his rivals at the early stage of the race. On lap 34, Stroll started battling against Magnussen for the 17th spot of the race, but the Haas driver was not ready to hand over his track position easily to the Canadian. They went wheel to wheel throughout that battle and swapped the track position several times, creating a rare kind of scenery at the tail of the pack. The battle continued up to the next lap and Stroll emerged the winner, pushing Magnussen to the tail of the pack. On lap 39, Perez decided to retake a position that he had lost while pitting by making a clever move against Leclerc. The Monegas driver was not ready to hand over his position that easily, but he failed in defending his position. Alonso decided to take a fresh set of rubber on lap 44, with the aim of taking advantage in the latter stage of the race. He lost some track position with that decision, but was in charge after rejoining the track, hunting down his opponents one by one. The Spaniard put his two wheels on gravel, as Carlos Sainz did in qualifying, but the 42-year-old driver was lucky to keep his car on track without experiencing any major incidents and started attacking his former McLaren teammate, Lewis Hamilton, on lap 49. It was a successful move and then started attacking Piastri, who was running 7th in the next lap. At the end of 56 laps, Max Verstappen crossed the finish line as the winner, recording his first ever Grand Prix victory in China. Behind him, Norris and Perez crossed the line respectively as podium finishers. The two Ferrari drivers, Leclerc and Sainz, occupied the remaining two spots of the top five in the final standings. Russell was in sixth, and Alonso was able to secure the seventh spot in the standings thanks to the soft tyre strategy in the latter part of the race. Behind Alonso, Piastri and Hamilton reserved their spots. Most notably, Hamilton was able to improve his track position up to 9th from 18th in the starting grid. Continuing their good run in the 2024 season, Haas driver Nico Hülkenberg was able to push his car to the last point-offering position of the race. That's how the race in China ended, producing some thrilling racing moments. Once again, Red Bull was able to spread their dominance in China, clearly proving that either Ferrari or McLaren have a lot of things to cover if they wish to challenge this dominant Red Bull team. How do you rate the race in China? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula 1 news. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.